2023 saw a new team become part of the front runner conversation, with that team being the Silverstone based Aston Martin Formula One team. At the start of the year, the team was so competitive that they had a legitimate chance to take second in this year's Constructors' Championship, but sadly, that fell apart. One reason for this is the lack of improvement from the upgrades that the team have brought to the car during the season, but another big reason for that is the performance of their number two driver. Canadian Lance Stroll, of course, son of team owner Lawrence Stroll. What we have witnessed in 2023 is an incredibly poor showing from Lance, given the car he has been driving, and it never really got that much better during the season. But in this video, I'm not only going to be looking at his 2023 performance, but reviewing his Formula 1 career to date to determine whether, after a few years now in Formula 1, whether he should have a future in the series. The team from Grove for 2017 decided to hire a young Canadian Lance Stroll for the season, with Stroll starting the season at just 18 years old, having come from the F3 European Championship, which he won whilst competing against the likes of Callum Eilat, Antoine Hubert, Zhou Guan Yu, Nikita Mazepin, George Russell, with even Lando Norris competing in a race in the 2016 edition of the series. That, though, is not the only reason, or possibly the most important reason, why Williams selected him to partner Felipe Massa, who had come back out for retirement to fill the void left by Valtteri Bottas, who went to Mercedes. A big reason why the team selected Stroll is, without a doubt, because of the financial package that was brought with signing Lance Stroll, as Lance's father Lawrence was and is a Canadian billionaire. The team would go on to further prove of later signings how the financial package a driver brought was more important for them during this period, with the signings of Sergei Sorokin, Robert Kubica, who brought sponsors on board, and Nicholas Latifi, who also had quite a financial backing. The selecting of Stroll specifically over others, though, was probably more so convenient for the team, as with Lance proving to be a real talent, the team could at least argue that the money that came with Stroll wasn't as big of a factor as it probably was. But how was Lance's debut season in Formula 1? Looking back, it wasn't too bad. There was definitely some good performances from Stroll during the year, and of course he took a podium finish in Baku that year where he managed to stay out of the wall to finish in third. To determine how good a debut season it was though, we need to look at a couple things. One is the performance of the car, which during 2017 was pretty decent for a midfield team, and Williams would end up finishing fifth in the championship, with Felipe Massa scoring the majority of the team's points. But how did Lance do comparatively against a past-his-prime Felipe Massa? Felipe beat Lance by a score of 17-2 in qualifying, with Massa beating Lance by a score of 8-4 in races where both drivers finished. The worst part of the comparison, though, is that Stroll was on average 6 tenths of a second slower than Felipe Massa during qualifying, which was quite poor. Now, Massa in 2017 definitely was not performing poorly. It was a mostly good year for the Brazilian, but this version of Massa was definitely not the one we saw briefly win the 2008 World Championship. Felipe Massa was a solid midfield driver at best during 2017, which does make Lance's debut year look quite a bit worse, but I will add a caveat. Lance Stroll was still in his teens during 2017, and I think most would agree that he was probably not fully ready to be in Formula 1 at this particular time, with it being... In hindsight, more beneficial if he had spent at least one more year in a Junior Formula series before making the leap. Felipe Massa would officially retire again at the end of 2017, with his replacement being Sergei Sorokin, who was a solid driver in what we now know as Formula 2, but definitely was not one of the 20 best drivers in the world. He was mostly brought on board for the money he provided the team. Now, given Stroll had one more year's experience than Sorotkin and had shown some potential during 2017, 
Lance would surely comfortably beat the Russian in 2018. That would never really materialise during the season as Stroll beat Sorokin 9-7 in the races they both finished, which is a lot closer than it was expected to be, with Sorokin out-qualifying the Canadian 12-8 during the year, with the Russian, on average, just over half a tenth quicker when he out-qualified Stroll. I know the Williams car was extremely difficult to handle and was clearly the worst car on the grid, but at the end of the day, it was the same for both drivers, which is why I view 2018 from Stroll as a very poor season. Thankfully for Lance, he would be bailed out by Daddy, who during 2018 invested in Racing Point after the collapse of Force India, which allowed Lance Stroll to take a Racing Point seat in 2019, over Esteban Ocon, who had certainly proved in his first full two seasons in Formula 1 that he was a much better driver. And luckily for Lance, the car he had for 2019 was much better than the Williams he had the year before. But racing points weren't exactly the strongest midfield outfit. After a surprisingly strong start, the team fell off the pace quite quickly to the point where they desperately needed a big mid-season upgrade to return to the point of consistently scoring points with Racing Point ending the year as one of the quicker midfield teams. But how did Stroll start his time at the team during this season? It was what has become known at this point as a typical Lance Stroll season, which we will see repeated as this video goes on consistently be much slower than your teammate in qualifying, half the season is spent in no man's land, whilst the other half of the year is spent putting in performances just about good enough for people not to call for his head. Oh yeah, and there must be the occasional weekend or two per season where Lance turns into Ayrton Senna for no reason whatsoever. In 2019, he had his Senna moment in Germany, produced some great comeback drives from low down positions to score points, and had a load of races where you could be excused for forgetting he was out there racing. The following season of 2020 is the one I really want to focus on before we get to what happened this year. In this COVID-affected season, Racing Point turned up incredibly with a super fast machine that later turned out to be basically a pink Mercedes, but nonetheless, they had one of the best three to four cars on the grid, with the team aiming for a top three finish in the Constructors' Championship. This season was also a great chance for Lance Stroll to prove in a much more competitive car just how good he really was and how important he can be for a properly competitive team. And whilst there were a couple special performances and some solid races from him, this was the year that we truly, in hindsight, found out what Lance Stroll brings to the table. The first couple races in Austria were quite tricky for the Canadian and for the team as well, but thankfully he delivered a decent result of P7 in the second Austrian race, even though it probably should have been fifth. But then came the third race of the season in Hungary, where Lance Stroll qualified third and finished fourth in a brilliant weekend for him and the team. The car was very strong that weekend, but to beat Perez that weekend the way he did and deliver a consistently strong weekend was very impressive, with some of us believing maybe this was the start of a great season for Stroll, but then did what he typically does by allowing his performance level to drop dramatically with a couple below average races at Silverstone, including a weekend where Nico Hülkenberg comfortably outpaced Stroll while stepping in for Sergio Perez, despite Hulk only having one week in the car. And considering Hulkenberg is not exactly one of the best drivers in the world, that is quite embarrassing if you ask me. Results would pick up again with a good result of fourth in Spain and a great podium finish at Monza in what was a manic finish. But once again with Lance, after a high or two, must come a string of either poor performances or poor results, which quickly followed his first podium of the year, where he wouldn't score a point for the next six races, albeit one of those he missed due to being infected with COVID, and another race he had a scary tyre failure in Mugello. The eventual return to point scoring came in Turkey, where his Ayrton Senna moment of the season came with incredible weekend as some of the toughest conditions we have seen for a long time, with the rain pouring and the track surface itself, when dry, pretty slippery, 
he grabbed his first ever pole position and brilliantly led the Turkish Grand Prix until it all fell apart after his final pit stop. His second and final podium would come later in Bahrain with him thankfully finishing the season in better form, but it was an incredibly frustrating season from Stroll. In 2020, Racing Point's aim was to finish third in the championship, and with the car they had for that season, third really should have been theirs, but instead McLaren would take third with Racing Point just behind in fourth. Now one of the reasons the team failed to finish in third is because of the protest launched by Renault early in the season alleging that Racing Point had straight copied the brake ducts from the Mercedes car of 2019 which of course won the 2019 championship. It ended with Racing Point being deducted 15 constructors points and with them only finishing seven points behind McLaren. Of course this was a major reason why they didn't finish third but to be honest I think they should have secured third anyway, despite the points deduction. The McLaren car in 2020 was a fast car with them getting a couple podiums through the year, but the racing point was consistently faster through the season and looked more likely to score podiums or even win a race in 2020, which eventually they did, of course, in a chaotic race in Bahrain. Sergio Perez, we know in qualifying, is not a very quick driver, but most of the time in the races back in 2020, he consistently delivered what was expected. Lance Stroll, however, whilst also being a bit slow in qualifying compared to most drivers, did not prove and really has not proven to be a driver that can consistently deliver what is expected from the team in the races where points, of course, are scored. That is what separated Perez and Stroll in 2020 and is what still separates them. And for me, in 2020, Lance Stroll has to take some of the blame for why the team did not secure third in the championship. Why was Lance not able to outpace Nico Hülkenberg, who had only been in the car for three days total prior to this particular race at Silverstone, but was faster than a better driver in Perez at the Hungara Ring circuit, which you could argue is more difficult? Why did Lance unnecessarily squeeze Lando Norris into Turn 1 in Portimao a bit too much when he didn't have to take such a risk with a clearly faster car? Why still in 2023 is Lance Stroll most of the time a complete afterthought in qualifying? I would love to know the answers to these questions, but at the end of the day, when looking at the two driver performances for this team in 2020, Lance Stroll is the one driver that I think should have done more and should have been demanding more from himself. Fast forward to 2021, he would now be racing as an Aston Martin driver. Same team, of course, and had a new teammate that would be a good comparison to see whether Stroll was truly important enough for the team to keep and important enough for the team for the championship. And that new teammate was four-time champion Sebastian Vettel. And when you compare how Stroll fared against Vettel in 2021 and 2022... You come away with the feeling that actually Stroll did well and maybe was better than we thought. But here there is only one important question. Was Stroll this competitive with Vettel because Stroll made good improvements to his driving? Or was Stroll this competitive with Vettel because Sebastian was, as we like to say nowadays, a bit washed? I think Vettel was probably a bit washed at this point. We definitely saw signs of that in 2019 and 2020 when he was at Ferrari. Therefore, this isn't quite as impressive as some may think it is. And overall, 2021 and 2022 turned out to be typical Lance Stroll seasons with some questionable driving thrown in for good measure. Now we arrive at the season we have just finished of 2023, which has been by far... Lance Stroll's worst season in Formula 1. And maybe it was always set up to be this way as a couple weeks before testing Lance Stroll was injured quite badly in a cycling accident. Remarkably he still made the first race and his first three to four races of the season were pretty good considering he wasn't quite at 100% physically. After that though God only knows why Lance Stroll's season plummeted. The average amount of lap time he lost to his new teammate for the year, Fernando Alonso, in qualifying was unbelievable when you consider that Fernando is also 
not exactly the quickest qualifying driver on the grid. And despite the car he was driving for the first half of the season being the second best car, Lance quite often was not only not contending for podiums or top five finishes, but was stuck fighting midfield cars that the car was much, much quicker than. And his qualifying performances this year have sunk even lower than I thought possible with him having an astonishing level of eliminations in Q1. And let's be honest, he has been slaughtered by Alonso all season long. His results may have picked up in the final couple races of the season, but Lance has been in 2023 alone, easily one of the worst drivers on the grid and is so incredibly lucky to be finishing inside the top 10 of the Drivers' Championship. Now, maybe some of you out there want to use the excuse of, well, Lance suffered an injury right before the season, and that's why the performances have been so poor this year. But there isn't the evidence to back that up as being a legit excuse. And on reflection for the 2023 season, Lance Stroll has been pathetic, especially given that this was... Lance's seventh full season in Formula One yet, it doesn't feel like he's any better now than he was in 2017 when he made his debut. What we saw in 2023 is what Lance Stroll ultimately is, a driver who is shockingly slow in qualifying, has decent race pace but gives himself way too much work to do on a race day to score good points and is unreliable for any team that is actually trying to finish in a specific position. Why do you think since he joined this team in 2019 that his dad owns that nobody else wants him? We never hear rumours of other teams wanting to hire Lance Stroll despite his dad thinking so much of him and it's because they know they can't have proper success with a driver like him in their team. The only use he is to any other team at this point, given how good the grid is in terms of quality, is the financial package that he offers for teams, possibly in financial trouble. And now because Lance has become so comfortable in a team that he knows will never get rid of him, his performances have dropped dramatically in standard and has reportedly even become disinterested in being a racing driver. Whether this is true or not, I honestly don't know. But the fact that this is even a rumour shows you how bad things have been this year. Lance Stroll, though, will continue to race for Aston Martin until Daddy says otherwise, which sadly shows that Lawrence Stroll, at least right now, is not serious about winning championships. Because there is no way Aston Martin as a team can win a championship with a complete passenger in the second car. Teams that win the Constructors' Championship 99% of the time have two reliable, consistent drivers doing the job needed week in, week out. Lance Stroll has consistently hamstrung the team by being nowhere near the positions he should be expected to be in. The Lance Stroll experiment, or whatever you want to call it, has been a total failure. A real front-running and possibly championship contending team would cut their losses. Let's see how bad things have to get before Lawrence does what must be done.